Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community, I'm Trigger, and this is another wrong build video, this time the 2018 BMW M5. Let's go! Alright, real quick before we get into the video, I just want to say thanks for watching. I know we don't do that enough as YouTubers, so thank you so much for being here. And secondly, if you're into car builds in real life, I have a second channel in which we're going to be building all kinds of different cars, starting with a 2004 Acura RSX Type S. So if you're into that kind of thing, there's a link in the description down below, and you can go check that out. We have no content as of right now, but it will be coming really, really soon. All right, let's get into this 2018 BMW M5. And the first thing I wanna do is give you the fastest engine. So the fastest engine for this car is the 585 horsepower forged 4.7 liter V8. This engine is, I believe, the most expensive engine for the car. So if you guessed that as the best one, then you were correct. It ran a 255.6 on Arian, which is really not bad. Uh, anything under three minutes is what I would consider in the top of the range or in the top half of the cars. Three minutes is kind of the time where you can see if the car is fast or not. So this one definitely is fast. It can't compete with the top 10 cars, but it is definitely somewhat fast. Also, it was able to run a 242.8 on Sonic. Again, not the fastest time, but definitely not a slow time either. And of course, it can get faster with someone else behind the wheel. But for me, it's a 242.8 on Sonic. Just my overall thoughts about this 2018 BMW is that I was very, very surprised that this big body M5 is something that can compete with some of the smaller cars in the game. For example, the Mazda RX-7 ran a 256 on Arian, which I probably could improve that a little bit. Or the Honda NSX Type R runs a 255. The Lotus Exige runs a 255. All of these cars are smaller and lighter than this M5. So I was pretty shocked that I was able to run a 255 on Arian with this big body BMW. I actually attribute this to the fact that it handles very, very nicely. The rear end is pretty slippy. It's a rear wheel drive car and it handles corners very nicely. So this is something that with a little bit of live tuning, you can get some traction you can get the right amount of slippage. This is a, it's a good car. It handles very well. Now, what it doesn't have is an acceleration off the line and acceleration through the bottom end of the gears. Uh, basically, gears one through four don't accelerate really well. Gears five, six, and seven accelerate pretty decently. So anyways, the car is decent for the track and that actually surprised me. So let me go ahead and give you the full track build. We're gonna start with that 585 forged engine. We got the Ultimate Plus engine parts and dual turbo and then the five by three pound NOS as always. Super track suspension, elite brakes, elite race tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite 7 Speed Gearbox, Super Track Differential, NOS Refills, NOS Duration, and then we've got Steering Sensitivity minus one, Downforce plus three, Traction Control Off, Drift Style on Gas. All right, let's move on to Drag Racing. All right, the drag build is really, really simple on this one. It's just a couple of things that we need to switch, and that is the one by 15 pound NOS, and the Elite Drag Tires. The rest of it is the same build as the track build. Now for drag racing, this car is kind of slow, I would say. It's been, it's in the slow category. It runs a 8.83 in terms of a quarter mile, not really the fastest. And then it's zero to 60 is a 1.97. So again, not really the fastest. The best zero to 60 is around 1.5 seconds. So with that said, here is the full build card. We've got the 585 horsepower forged engine again, the ultimate plus engine parts dual turbo, but this time we're going with the one by 15 pound NOS. We've got super track suspension, elite brakes, and elite drag tires. We also have elite plus clutch, elite seven speed, Speed gearbox and the super track differential nos refills and duration as always and then steering sensitivity is minus one downforce minus five traction control off drift style on gas all right moving on to the drift build so for drifting in this car you have to have a specific build and i like to start with a rear wheel drive build and then i kind of make changes from there the rear wheel drive build for a standard build for any rear wheel drive car is going to be speed cross suspension drag tires 
dollars and a drift differential so we'll start there and then we make some changes what i ended up finding out is that the tires were a little bit too sticky and the car was struggling to transition from left to right it was difficult and i had to use the handbrake in order to transition so we throw some drift tires on there and it fixed the problem 100 percent that being said, it doesn't really score that high, so I really can't recommend it, but it is very easy to control, and for that reason, it actually is very fun to drift around. You can three-star the activities around the map with this car, but it does take a little bit more skill than some of the other cars that score higher. All right, that being said, let's give you the full build. We've got that same engine, engine parts, dual turbo, and five by three pound NOS that we always have, super speed cross suspension, elite brakes, pro drift tires, Elite Plus Clutch, Elite 7 Speed Gearbox, and the Pro Drift Differential. We've got NOS refills and duration, and then steering sensitivity is plus five, downforce is minus five, and those are actually really important to the build. This helps you with steering response, and it helps the back end slide a little more. Traction control off and drift style on gas. And lastly, let's take a look at the off-road abilities. As always, I test this on two off-road courses, HTV2 and Rumble, and on HTV2, the BMW M5 ran a 151.1, which is actually not bad. It's not, not super fast, but it's pretty good. It goes along with like, say the Subaru BRZ or the DB5 or the Fair Lady. Those all run at times that are pretty similar. It ran a 314.7 on Rumble, which is not great. It's actually a little bit lower on the list. Now, I it really didn't have a lot of problems with top speed, so I expected it to do better on Rumble, but it just didn't. It's combined time, we combine those two times together, is 505.8, and I use that time to rank it on my list. And in that case, this thing falls somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 or 20. It's somewhere in like the top 25 in terms of its comparison to the other cars that I've tested. So with that said, let's go ahead and give you the off-road build. It's that same engine, engine parts, dual turbo, and the five by three pound NOS. As always, we've got the super rally suspension, elite brakes, elite off-road tires, elite plus clutch, elite seven speed gearbox, super rally differential, and then we've got NOS refills and duration. And of course, steering sensitivity plus five, downforce minus five, traction control off and drift style on gas. And with that, I will end the video. I really appreciate you guys watching this and your support on this series. It's been absolutely amazing and I'm gonna keep making these videos till we finish all the cars in the game and hopefully we can finish that before the next Need for Speed comes out. And once again, if you guys are into real car builds, you wanna follow me, I am building a 2004 Acura RSX Type S and I'm gonna be doing it on my second channel. Again, link is in the description down below. I will catch you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Trigger out.